Welcome back to the channel, good friends. We're approaching the finishing line when it comes to the correction of the barn find here. This is the worst of it on the fender. And we just have to go back both sides, driver's side and passenger side, fender, door, rear quarter panel. And this is what we're looking at. Um, you know, scratches, swirls, oxidation, gouges, you name it, it has it. So let's work on the worst area. And we're going to go and grab some 1000 grit to work on this little patched area. This is where they did some type of patch repair. It was a blend in job. And then somebody tried to sand it smooth, didn't know what they were doing and left it go. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to finish it up here. It's uh, a little off when it comes to shade, but when I get it sanded and we have it all glossed over, you're going to have to look for it to actually find the patch. It would help if the body work that was done underneath the paint was a little bit better as well, but what are you going to do? This video and this series was about um, restoring what you have, not making new and, and you know repairing everything to, to brand new. This is what a lot of the classic and antique cars guys are going to be worth a lot more if you can restore what is there instead of just replace everything and making it new. I hope that makes sense. I just have a 1000 grit wet sanding sheet wrapped around a foam coating applicator. Perfectly fine. There's enough laying around your shop that you could use. Um, you can also order KXK sticks or they even have some on Amazon that are very affordable. Keep the area moist, feeding moisture as much as you can to keep that sanding sheet clean, and stop, clean the area, and check your progress often. Using a shop light on an angle, you'll be able to see it, but the best way is to take your hand and gently glide across the surface of the fender, and you'll be able to feel it. We have between six and seven and a half mils of single stage to play with, but as you can see here, we're cutting pretty deep because we're starting to get some dark, rich red color when it comes to the residue and the oxidation that's coming off. So when I'm satisfied that it's nice and smooth in that area, it's time to continue on. And we're now at the step where we pretty much have handled just about all the other panels. And that's the 3000 attached to uh, the polisher. You can use a sanding machine, you can use a polisher. I'm trying to show you, you, do not, you don't have to go out and get um, tools and machines for each individual job. You can actually get machines that you can convert from polisher to sander, and that's exactly what I did here. And it's time to step down just like we did on the other panels to the 5000 grit and I'll do that by hand using this foam block here because as you can see it will conform to this nice curvy fender we have here and that's what I prefer over using a machine for this step. Stepping down once again to the LVR 503 dynamic cut. With everything polished out, the fender actually turned out better than I thought it would because it was in rough shape. The little patched in area is still a little shade off, but the glossier we get it as we throw the protection on in the next step, the more it will sort of blend in and be harder to see. So let's finish out the rest of this car. 
And as the rest of the panels were quite uneventful, that's exactly what I did. And this is the finished product before protection. What is the protection going to be? Well, that's going to be a product that's new to this channel. It's Extreme Solutions LVR-357. That's a magnum wax. This is a very rich formula of acrylic and polymers and carnauba all in one. And I'm going to show you exactly how to use it right here. If You can use it by hand. You could apply it by machine. If you're going to apply it by machine, grab one of those black applicator foam pads. Or if you want to apply it by hand here, just a microfiber applicator will do a drop or two work it into two panels at a time i like to let it sit for a few minutes not wipe it off directly after applying it but i don't want to let it sit too long so when it comes to this area here i'll apply it to one of the t-tops hop to the other side apply it there come back over wipe off what i applied and that's the perfect amount of time to let the acrylic and the rich blend start to bond to the surface. LVR 357 gives the deep, rich, wet look to both clear coat and single stage. And then when it cures in 24 to 48 hours, will protect against corrosion, oxidation, UVA, UVB, surface contaminants. And my favorite part gives the surface the just incredible gloss and more gloss as it cures, so give it that proper cure time. The product is at its best when applied as standalone to clean, clear naked, clear coat. But it also can be used as a topper on top of an existing coating, sealant, or form of protection. The durability just will not be guaranteed on top of something else compared to when it's applied to naked clear coat. As you can see, easy to remove, easy to apply, user friendly. In a future video, I'll get it on a test panel. We'll see how it increases gloss and protection on a panel, and then we'll beat it up and we'll check its durability as well. And this is the part I was looking forward to. We took this measurement at the beginning of the series. You guys tell me, what was it? Because it's now 97.1 gloss units. A huge turnaround, and this is what we now have. This is the finish after a few steps of wet sanding, some areas we start at 1,000 grit, some areas we started at 2,000 grit, we step to 3,000 grit, and then 5,000 grit, and then polished out from there. And then, of course, the new Magnum as protection. Okay, good friends, that will wrap up this series, and I hope you enjoyed the videos uh, as much as I enjoyed doing it and, and breaking down step-by-step -step how to restore finishes such as this. Quite similar to how you would store, you know, old, dull clear coat as well. You just have to be more careful because we all know how thin clear coat is. I hope there were nuggets that you could take out of each video. Um, you can do this on your own, guys. Uh, I don't care... I hate seeing comments down in the comment section uh, when people are trying to put fear into some of you guys. Um, you know, uh, he makes it look easy, but believe me, it's not for the faint of heart. Guys, I know you can do it. I know you can do the stuff that I'm doing on these videos, because if I can do it, you can do it. A little bit of research. Guys, when I started my first C3, there were no YouTube videos, forums to look up information. I had to really rely on a lot of my local mechanics and just maybe by doing the process over and over again until I got it right. Um, it, it's not going to hurt anybody. And while you're out and about and you may, maybe see an old classic or antique car tucked in a barn or in the corner of a field somewhere, the owner may be on the edge of getting rid of, pick it up. The projects are so satisfying. Take your son out, your daughter, your spouse, your brother, your father. Pick up that project, work on it together. The memories, the bonds you form, uh, they are not to be forgotten. It's, it's a really satisfying experience and a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Brian from Apex Detail, 
I'll catch you in the next video or series. We have a lot to cover and I have a lot of videos to keep you guys entertained.